Hello and welcome to Manny Bill. Um, this is sort of a, a one-off kind of uh, little video I'm doing here. Uh, as you might have noticed, I've uploaded a few trailers and old um, silent movies uh, like uh, Le Voyage dans la Lune, uh, Méliès, and, and, other, uh, and a few others, right? I'm sort of a movie fan. I like that. I like movies. I'm a... Uh, I like the f movie medium, the film medium, I like the old classics and so on. And um, if I can help a bit, you know, uh, get make things accessible, uh, old classics and so on, right? Uh, and another thing is, uh, I recently noticed that a, a 4K remaster, or not remaster, in a 4K restoration or scanning, of Citizen Kane has be, had been done uh, by Warner Brothers and issued also by Criterion a Collection, uh, an American label that is not that accessible in Denmark. And I guess you need to have sort of a, a code-free, what, what's it called? Um, unlocked uh, Blu-ray player in order to region, a region-free uh, Blu-ray player to, to play them where I live in Europe. That's a bit of a, uh, I, I never was a big fan of this region thing, which is sort of a way of creating uh, artificial scarcity in, in, in an area, right? Um, but never mind. Uh, after watching uh, Citizen Kane in, in a 4K, uh, I don't have a 4K uh, a viewer or, or, or you know, flat screen. I only have a, a normal HD. Um, so I can view the, the 4K restoration, but I, I have watched the Blu-ray, the HD version of the, the 4K restoration, and it looks very good. And I only have a small beef with the sound, which seems to be a little too much noise reduction that muffles it a bit. I would like it to be more clear and more open and more like 40s sound, right? Um, otherwise, it's it's perfection, right? And there's a few commentaries by Peter Bogdan Bogdanovich, Bogdanovich, which was a close confidant of Orson Welles in his later years. They basically lived together at some point, I believe. And um, Peter Bogdanovich is a director in his own right, um, is famous for a movie called Paper Moon, and uh, and then uh, Robert e Roger Ebert ha has made a commentary and and which is sort of a dragged over from a ten year old the the, the the last restoration they did right so that's fine right and a few other bits and pieces right it's the Warner Brothers version I have and not the Criterion um. And and is if you haven't seen Citizen Kane, I can highly uh, recommend it because it's sort of a, it's sort of a. It's a it's hard to, the 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 point with Citizen Kane is it's hard to pinpoint, it's hard to classify the movie, it's sort of a towering, uh, or maybe not towering even, but it has it's it's sort of its its own category it's it's beyond category almost right the way the the, the photography the, the the acting the the, the storytelling the the editing the, everything is different at least from from the point and time it was made but it seems to be nobody has made any anything similar to this it, and I believe it's very, very, very difficult to make this kind of movie and make it work and get it to work. And I, I believe it's so difficult to make this kind of movie that it's you have to be almost as ignorant as Orson Welles was when he was 24 years old or something like that, when he was, you know, making this movie and had, you know, final cut from Archeo Pictures. Uh, that you you have to be almost crazy to do something like this, right? With uh, untrained, uh, you know, not movie silver screen actors. Uh, you, 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 Orson Welles hadn't made a movie before. He, he didn't know the craft. 
he hadn't been an actor in, uh, on the screen before, and you know, all this, right? It's like, it's sort of impossible to, to uh, it's almost a, a miracle it, it was made, right? And the, 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 after the, the, the following story about how it was, they were trying to kill the movie by the, the one who felt it was made about him, is somebody, uh, a paper, paper, newspaper man called Hearst, who felt it was made about him, and there was very good reasons why you could um, uh, argue that, right? But, uh, you know, the, the point of this little uh, video here is actually not about Citizen Kane as such, but more uh, I, I was inspired to, to see the movie called Mank, which is based, at least to some extent, on the backstory and after story of Citizen Kane, right? And Mank refers to the, the writer called Hern Mankiewicz, who was sort of paid to write a story for film, right? And first of all, I believe that Orson Welles was trying to do Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, another famous novel, right? Uh, and But he couldn't get it sort of to work, and then Mankiewicz was sort of trying to come up with something. And he was, he was Mankiewicz was actually a friend of that newspaper man called Hearst, Randolph Hearst. William Randolph Hearst, I think. And he based the story up on his experiences being his sort of court jester at, at parties and, you know, so, so and, and that's sort of like the controversial part of this thing, right, that Mankiewicz was embedded some, somewhat in Hearst and wrote a story about a newspaper magnet and his life uh, after his death, we, we get to see his life through the, the movie called Now Citizen Kane, right? And um, and how that how, how that whole sort of after story about what really happened with this story of Citizen Kane and you know Hearst and what, what the hell was going on? It has been a controversial topic ever since, and Mank sort of builds on top of this and I, I i can see the idea of making a movie about it but uh and i and i might point out that it's david fincher who who made the movie or, or directed the movie and it's on netflix uh, and it's in black and white and so on right uh and i think i think i've heard that it was david fincher's father who wrote this story uh, or this script for this movie. I'm not sure. I, I might be out completely wrong about that. But that's what he at least he has based it on, right? Uh, I, I believe. Okay. The, the, the problem I have with Mank is that I, I don't really care about this script story. How much did Mankiewicz write compared to how much did Orson Welles change or add or remove within the script compared to what the bare bone that Mankiewicz wrote, right? And if it wasn't for Citizen Kane, I don't think that Mankiewicz would be remembered at this point. That wouldn't be a Mank movie, right? You can find a whole bunch of script writers from that period, late 30s, early 40s, that could... that are equally important they just weren't lucky to write the script to citizen kane sort of so or write the citizens uh, it's not the script as such that makes citizen kane maybe that's what i'm going for right because i feel that it's a company the it's it's everything of course right everything chips into the whole thing but it wouldn't be the citizen kane that is remembered all these years later, 80 years later, or more than, it wouldn't be the Citizen Kane remembered. It would be possibly long forgotten like other movies that are also great from that period, right? But nobody remembers them anymore. Like uh, the, there's a uh, John Ford movie called Long Journey Home or something like that, which was actually also photographed by the same guy who photographed Citizen Kane. 
Nobody remembers that one. It even has John Wayne in it. It's beautiful shot and so on, right? Nobody remembers that one, but people know about Citizen Kane, right? Uh, but the script for the, the other one might be as equally great, but nobody remembers that script writer because the movie didn't resonate. So it's not about the script as such. It's more about Citizen Kane and Orson Welles, really, right? If it wasn't for Citizen Kane, the movie and the photographers and the actors and so on and Orson Welles, nobody would make a Mank movie, right? So the problem of this movie of Mank is that I don't really care about this Mank guy. I like uh, Gary Oldman who plays Mank. Uh, I always liked Gary Oldman way back from when he played Lee Harvey Oswald in, in Oliver Stone's movie JFK, uh, which is the first time I remember seeing him, right? And I thought he was, and I was in Leon, he plays a, a corrupt cop, right? And though it's a bit overacted uh, or overdirected, you could maybe say, right? Uh, it's still a great role. And, and he has had a lot of roles ever since. And he's a very flexible kind of actor who can do a lot of different stuff, right? Uh, as opposed to maybe Charles Dance, uh, who plays uh, William Randolph Hearst in, in Mank who is sort of the same sort of king actor. He also, he always plays the, the tough guy, right? The, the tough old, uh, you know, uh, patriarch, something like that, right? Gary Oldman seems to have a lot of more strings to play on, right? But I don't care about this man, dude, right? And he's, he's an awful dude. Uh, I mean, uh, okay, he wrote a script. We don't get to understand why he wrote various aspects of this script, right? It's more sort of circumstantial stuff. He was a drinker. He, you know, he, he wasn't together with his wife or his children. And he was, he was bedridden because of a car accident. And he, he was drinking. And then he was also drinking. And then he met, was, you know, uh, fraternizing with the Hearst, uh, you know, empire uh, on St. Simeon, which is would be known as Sanadu in in, uh, in Citizen Kane. Um, but we don't, I mean, then we see the various famous persons. We are sort of, it's sort of the, the, one of these kinds of movies. Okay, so now we are going to, we are going to see Austin Wells. We are going to see Louis B. Mayer. We are going to see David O. Selznick. I guess, how well will they find some actor who looks like the person and so on, right? And they sort of these... Uh, kind of, I don't know, what would the term be? It's sort of, there has been a lot of these movies and I have a soft spot for them. There's also one they made with uh, Lauren Hardy a few years ago where you sort of, you step back in time and they recreate the persons and you can sort of see the persons in a, in a, in a live action fe feature rather than the, the movies they make. And, and then they recreate, they, they did a Hitchcock movie where where uh, Anthony Hopkins, no, not Anthony Hopkins. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, is it Anthony? I, I, oh. The guy who played Hannibal the Cannibal, right? <laughs> um, played Hitchcock. And so and it, it, it sort of, uh, it sort of, it seems like Hollywood has grounded themselves into a halt and all they can do is go back in time and try to recreate past glory days, right? It's sort of a, if if not sentimental, at least some kind of nostalgia and try to, how did they make get to this magic back then? Let's try to emulate that by cre setting a story in that time so we can go and do it the same way as they did it back then. Because the way we do movies in 2023 is so fucked up that we don't we, we don't like our, the movies we make anymore right can can you come up with a movie from from hollywood within the last decade that is remarkable in any way i can't think of any right i i, I literally can't think of any fucking movie in from hollywood in the last 10 years it has been you know it has been these superhero movies and all sorts of garbage right the uh, you know Star Wars is a pile of shit, man. Right? It's everything is screwed, right? And then they make something like this, which is sort of 
an attempt to sort of go back in time and do things differently, but they have to label it, oh, we're just recreating this so we can we can make movies in a different fashion by emulating prior times, right? I don't really like that. And I'm reminded that of all persons who said that the most stupid way, and I'm paraphrasing, right? The most stupid way of making a movie is doing an homage, right? It was Orson Welles who said that, <laughs> of all the persons. And they're choosing Citizen Kane, are basing the story of Citizen Kane and the backstory of that, and doing a complete homage kind of approach, right? They have some, they're walking around in, 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 the, in that San Simeon, which was Hearst's, uh, you know, estate. And they have put the, you know, the, the, the giraffes from Citizen Kane and the monkeys and, and the, the backdrop drawings, uh, the, the, the mats painting in, 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 where you see Sanatu in the beginning and in, in, the, in the end. This drawing with, with, with uh, windows, or little dots, it made the same way in the movie. You have the, the shots from below where you see the ceiling in the same way as you do in Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane is a movie about a fictional character, and they have transformed that into being a representation of Hearst. Right? It, it, it's it's just kind of weird way of doing it, right? It's like they sit there. Okay, how can we bring in something that is Citizen Kane like, and emulate that and give it an homage, and and be. We can say, oh, we are paying this homage to Citizen Kane and so on. And basically they're saying that Orson Welles was kind of the bad guy in this Mank movie, right? And Mank should have had his own Oscar. You see him standing with his Oscar as if Orson Welles don't really count here, right? And then Orson Welles is referenced. Oh, there, there's actually a, a sound recording. Uh, I think it's the original, right? Where... where um, Orson Welles says uh, that Mankiewicz can, he could kiss his half, kiss, you can kiss my half, right? You can kiss my half of the statue of the, because they split the, the, the Oscar statue that it received. Uh, the, the only Oscar that Citizen Kane got was for the script, right? So they had to split it between him and Mankiewicz because the credit in the movie is for both of them, right? So Orson Welles apparently said he can... He can kiss his half, right? <laughs> Which is sort of a, you know, kiss his ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something there, right? Okay, fair enough. They were maybe the best of friends, right? Uh, Austin Wills was a very energetic and ambitious young man who seemed to turn everything into gold of which he touched. Now, that would be a turning point with Citizen Kane thinks that it would start to go downward from there, right, for him. And... In later years, Austin Wells would turn into some kind of obscure Buddha, cigar <laughs> smoking Buddha, right? That would only turn up in you know talk shows here and there. Or he would turn into sort of a Hitchcock kind of character in later years, right? So, but. <clears throat> I don't particularly like this mank. I had, to, you know, I had high hopes. I must admit, I'm a, I'm a fan of of Orson Welles, and uh, I have no, I have nothing against this Mankiewicz guy, right? And he's basically just a sort of a MacGuffin for an excuse for tapping into writing or, or, or creating a movie about these times, right? <coughs> and I expected more depth in in the and more background story around Citizen Kane. Because it's like, it, it, it takes a long time to talk about everything but the script writing. It's sort of underlying the story, but you never get the... It's not very much about the script writing, right? And there's also this uh, legend about uh, Orson Welles getting mad uh, when Mankiewicz was around, and then he started to throw suitcases around or something like that and then Mankiewicz says ah I think we can use that in the script and so on right that's also a part of the Mank movie and it would turn up in the movie where you see Citizen Kane um, Kane is throwing around stuff when his second wife leaves him right uh, so I can see the connection there but it seems just so 
it seems so artificial. It seems so, okay, we can bring that in. Oh, they, and uh, the, the, the nerds, the Citizen Kane nerds, will know that that's what is referencing. The, and then they will say, ah, how brilliant of David Fincher, right? The worst scene in the movie, man, is where it's also supposed to be a, a, a true story, so to say, right? There seems to be witnesses to the, this of what happened that uh, Mank arrives drunk at a party at Hearst, uh, and there are all these famous people, Louis B. Mayer, you know, who knows, right? All these, uh, you know, celebrities, right? And famous actresses and so on, right? And he spouts about his new script, and he's drunk, and you know, he throws up whatever, right? And these the some of the people leaves the dinner table one by one as he he seems to be more so. Um, no, uh, he's drunk. Oh no, I can't stand this. I have to. I'm triggered. I have to leave the room. Sort of. It and the way they do it, it it, it seems it's sort of a it's a very dead kind of. It's an emotionally dead. It, it's an a. Uh, there's no electricity. There's no fire. There's no passion. There's no. It, there, there's no passion underlying this movie, in my opinion, right? It feels sort of dead and empty. And it's very, it's sort of, um, it has this um, punchline kind of attitude, this mank guy, right? I don't know if that's realistic or not. But it seems to be all sorts of empty script lines they are throwing at you. But when you get to the sort of the deeper level of stuff, you don't, feel I, I don't feel that that i'm given anything i can sort of chew on right i'm just giving empty lines and no insight into the script no insight into mankiewicz no insight basically none about orson wells or citizen kane so what am i left with i don't care about this drunkard right who apparently wrote a big part of the script for citizen kane so um, there's nothing in it, right? It's like, oh my God, man. Oh, I had expected a lot more because I had heard some good reviews. I, oh, it's great movie making and great acting and it's about Citizen Kane and Orson Welles. And I said, like, wow, that, that sounds cool, right? And when I watched it, it was like, is this it? Is this it, man? And they use these cheap tricks of using some kind of shots that looks like something from Citizen Kane, right? And And... And, uh, you know, these Easter egg and, you know, member berries, <laughs> whatever you call it, right? I said, oh, look, that's, you remember that? That's from Citizen Kane, ah, right? Oh, no, I'm not impressed. So, okay, I would, I can still, if you're a Citizen Kane fan, I can, I can see that you would appreciate some of it. And it sort of, it can be somewhat interesting to, to watch, right? But there's, I, it, it, it's like, I remember uh, very clearly uh, uh, a quote from Hitchcock, which is, a movie is everyday life with the boring bits removed, right? In other words, the interesting stuff is left in the movie. I feel more like this is, let's keep the boring bits and then get rid of the good stuff, right? <laughs> it's like... I don't know if there's some copyright thing they have to work around here. Possibly, possibly, right? But still, right? It's it's kind of a boring thing. I I, I I'm not uh, I'm not impressed. Uh, not at all. So that's it. Uh, please share, like, and subscribe. Otherwise, have a nice day. See you in the next one.